I'm here today with Norma Miller, who is an author, choreographer, dancer, and is the star of a new John Buffar film, Queen of Swing. Now, how did you get all this done in your 29 years of life? Survival. <laughs> Survival from one career to the other. You know, like, you ever heard that old saying, when one door closes, another open? Well, when one door closed, when the door closed on dancing, I had to find another way. It was not my idea to close the door, but we got into a war, and we were down in Rio. We had just finished a movie, A Hell's a Poppin', and uh, out of California, and we went down to Rio de Janeiro, and we got there on the 5th of December. And our opening day was the 6th of December. And the 7th day of December, we were walking down the Rio Branca, and there's a big newspaper. Uh, and I mean, we couldn't read Portuguese, but you can tell something happened in America, and it was the bombing of Pearl Harbor. And we were saying, well, what, what, where is, what's Pearl Harbor? We didn't even know there was a Pearl Harbor. <laughs> there we were at the midst of a war, just opening in the biggest casino in Rio de Janeiro, and America was at war. Well, that was the first shock, and that was 1941, December. Now, we had a six-week contract before we could even, uh, well, we were going we to complete the contract, but then by the time we completed the contract, we found we could not uh, use, we could not leave the country because it was too dangerous. We came by boat, and our tickets was by boat to go back. Well, now you can't go by boat because the German U-boats is in the harbor. Right. Which extended the contract that we had originally to another few months, whatever it was. But we were there during the time when Brazil came into the war, and we were in Brazil. Do you know what it is to be an American in a foreign country, and there's a war going on? You become very nationalistic. All of a sudden, we realized we were Americans. Right. And what are we going to do? Right. So the whole concept is beyond just being a dance act. You now become an American in a foreign country. And so many things that's going on. And we were there. At, in those days, you stayed at what they call pension houses. Today, you call them bed and breakfasts. Right. And we're staying at this pension house. And in this pension house are, uh, uh, I think, six or seven Germans. Now, it was the Germany has now come into the war. Pearl Harbor, Japanese bombed us, but Germany had been at war with, this it's very, gets very confusing. <laughs> so we're there in the midst of this, in this house with these Germans. And all of a sudden, while having breakfast, every door to that breakfast room opened up and in stepped a soldier with one of them big MSI aiming. Oh my goodness. Wait a minute, I, I think I had a piece of bread in my mouth and I, and I don't know the language, they're saying something. Right. But the Germans are taken out, out of the house, and they never come back. That's when we found out Brazil had entered the war. Now we had another war. Now they're in the midst of what they call a brownout. That means the lights and all the trolley cars and things are going down. This is the weirdest feeling in the world, because what are we doing down here? Right. And, and how are we going to get out of here? Yeah, right, and right. That was the the the, the stretch of what of, of Frankie had to find a way to get us back by air. We had to fly back, so we could only fly back at three at a time because it was six of us. And Frankie arranged for us to fly back, and and uh, Al and I were the first three to go back, and we went back to Miami. That got us back on American soil, and Frankie, Willie May, and Billy followed us and we all landed back in Miami, and that was my first introduction to segregation. I had never seen it before. And I'm in what? Miami, and I saw a colored bus, colored water, colored town. Then I knew what I'd heard about was true. I'm in the midst of a war, fighting for the rights of people, and I'm in a segregated country that I can't even drink the water from any ordinary fountain. Right. So a lot of mixtures started in my life from then on, and that's when I realized I had to fight for the rights of America. Right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, something that you try to work into your, your, your dance and your, and your movies. How do you think America is progressing, or are they, with race, racial integration? 20 years ago, I couldn't sit here beside you. How far is, have we come? 
a long ways. Can you dig it? Yes, ma'am. I remember the time I couldn't <laughs> go. Why, why did you think the kids had to sit at a, a fountain just to eat uh, to, at a five intensive store to get a sandwich or a milkshake at a Woolworth? That was the kids your age did that. And if it wasn't for you and your age, it wouldn't have happened. You understand? Yes, ma'am. And that was the beginning of we know you're fighting a war in a foreign country, but what about the war you got going on in this country? And that's the war we began fighting and we're winning. And how did you get started as a dancer? When did your career begin? Well, it never began. It was always there. In other words, I come up, I was born in Harlem. It was the renaissance of the greatest uh, migrant movement in the world. I mean, anybody who was black uh, could walk, ride, walk. You, went, you came to Harlem because Harlem was the center of freedom for black people at that time. But uh, freedom is what America has always stood for. And they had to realize that the rights of people belong to all people. And that was the reason why we have a civil rights bill, even though we only had a civil rights bill less than 55 years. But that's what we were always fighting for, because out of slavery, 300 years, segregation, 100 years, and the next 65 years, we finally got so I can say hello to you, and you're white, and I'm black, and we're sitting side by side. But the world I come up in, Savoy Ballroom, 1926. It was the first ballroom that was built in Harlem. And of course in Harlem, white people always was more in Harlem than we were. And so they came to the Savoy Ballroom. So 1926, the Savoy Ballroom was the first place in the world that was completely integrated. And that was the life I had. I didn't know about segregation until I landed in Miami. I heard about it, but it was now the first time now I'm witnessing it and I'm seeing it, and I realize this is wrong. And what's wrong got to be righted. And that was the life I led to fight this. But we came with a, we came with a mob. See, it takes power to break down the walls of segregation. So what did we do? We had the music. Louis Armstrong trumpet, I tell you, the walls of Jericho fell down after he started blowing. He became ambassador of jazz. And he was the greatest diplomat this country ever produced. He was one of your good friends, correct? He was my dearest friend. He's one of your good friends. The man how, that I, lo I loved him dearly. How did his music influence you how, as a dancer? It was the music because it was jazz. It was the music I danced to. He gave, he gave up our music life. He gave our music he made it meaning. So here in the ballroom, this great music is playing. This great dancing is playing. And remember, they tried to keep us separated. The South tried to influence the world. They couldn't influence the support ballroom. I, I, had, I danced with white kids all the time. I mean, some of our great dancing partners was white. And it was white kids and black kids who produced this great dance. It wasn't just black. It was black and white. And right. that's what made the difference. And the world had to recognize that. You're known as the queen of swing. Yes. Uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Bafar has come out with this new documentary. Mm -hmm. I, I, real quickly, I want to know, you're traveling in April to Dallas, is that right? No, I'm, I'm going to, from here, I'm going to London. Going to London? I'm going to London Wednesday to join a big dance event there called Goodnight Sweetheart. Where do you get your energy to do all this traveling? Poverty. <laughs> I mean, if, how do I have to make a living? And remember, I'm, I'm a single woman. Right. I'm not a single mom, I'm a single woman. Right. I have nobody to pick up the tabs, and I better get out there and do it, else the rent can't get paid. The rent is a great motivation. Right. I don't like to sleep under the viaduct. Right. <laughs> <laughs> become one of the homeless. Because <laughs> if you don't pay the rent, you will become one of the homeless. And dearie, I have lived in such a place that I have been evicted so many times I've got drapes that match the sidewalks. <laughs> So I keep dancing, or studying dancing, writing about dancing, and I teach people how to be a better dancer. I don't physically dance anymore, but if you wanted to dance and you're a dancer, I can show you how you can make your dance better, and that's my claim to fame. We appreciate your time and taking the time to talk to us today. Thank I you. think you're amazing. Thank you so much. And I, I get a lot of inspiration from just talking to you today. You're still cute. <laughs> he got... He got Cherry cheeks, <laughs> yeah.